dealing with the coronavirus as believers and followers of Jesus Christ. That's right. We're all dealing with that right now. Most people, at least in the U.S. and even the world, are sequestered and dealing with this COVID-19. Sometimes I refer to it as the plague. So this thing started, well, actually came into uh, uh, recognition and prominence as far as our country, but this thing right around the middle of March, which is about seven weeks ago. And so over the past two weeks, the U.S. has had a complete lockdown. We're all homebound. Um, people out there with masks on that do go out, you know, the whole thing. And so the deaths are starting to slow down now. And uh, what, today is the 16th of April, okay? And, but there's still a lot of fear, stress, and uncertainty. And so this video, I pray, will uplift you, uh, encourage believers uh, to stay close to the Lord, and um, I will offer scriptures at the end, uh, a lot of scriptures, uh, the ones that have comforted and strengthened me throughout the years and definitely apply right now. So again, there's a lot of emotional and financial stress right now, job layoffs, disruption, confinement, isolation. And uh, this doesn't mean that the problems that all of us had, whatever they were, emotional, financial, relational, this doesn't mean that they that stopped. It means that it's magnified by now this invisible enemy. And so we've done the social, we're doing the social distancing, um, some of you may even know someone who has the virus. Um, what do we do as believers and followers of Jesus Christ? What do we do? Well, this is what we do. We're in a war here. We're, we're in a battle. And the Lord is watching us. The world is watching us. And this is an opportunity, even though it is an incredibly stressful time. We are to trust God no matter what. He really is in control. This is not a uh, cliche or just a worn out saying. God is in control. He knows. He sees. This is not a surprise to him. And so it will be used to his glory. Every tragedy. Because God cannot be defeated. We know that. And so we pray. We do not succumb to the fear. We take the necessary precautions. The CDC, follow the rules, okay? We trust Father God, that's right, the maker of heaven and earth, the originator of our souls, our glorious creator, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we also trust his Son, that's right, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer. We use this time to draw closer to him and to encourage others with the word, with our lives, as the world looks on at us. So here's some encouragement for us, for believers during these perilous times. And I'm going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to give some of Psalm 91 and then Romans 8. And then I'm going to list on this uh, video many scriptures. Look them up. Be encouraged. And God bless you through all this. I have been praying not only for the immediate family and people I work with and uh, my clients. I've been praying for the entire world because I know this is a time of a lot of stress. And perhaps... Some people will even be drawn to the Lord because of this. It is my prayer that souls are gained for the Lord throughout this. Psalm 91, verse 1. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers, and under 
his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Rampart. Verse 5. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Verse 6. Nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Plague. Verse 9. If you say the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Verse 12, they will lift you up in their hands that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Verse 14, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. Verse 15, he will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. Romans 8, here's some verses here that I have found uplifting, strengthening, encouraging throughout my life and they certainly apply today. Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? And he goes on to do more, right? But I just listed those few. In verse 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Verse 38, and here's the knockout, the knockout shot of all by the Lord God in heaven, okay? Verse Romans 8, 38, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So the additional verses I'm going to put below and I pray that they bring you comfort and strength because these scriptures have given me incredible encouragement and ministered to me over the years. And so I pray that you were blessed by this encouragement, take the precautions, stay close to God, huddle up uh, with your family members, social distancing and all that, but believe that God is in control. And yes, this pandemic, the, this virus episode, it will end and there'll be more tribulations and trials in this world, but God is for us and not against us. And so I pray that these scriptures bless you and I pray today that God blesses you. Amen.